My name is Alberto Lopez. I'm a musician and producer based in Los Angeles, and also a member of Jungle Fire, a group that plays music inspired by traditions of the African diaspora. To answer the question posed in the title of this document, I want to take you back to the 2014 edition of the Mompos Jazz Festival in Mompos, Colombia. That's me, the long-haired guy with a beard playing percussion. That night, as we were walking to our performance, we heard two young musicians playing in the street. They were playing an infectious cumbia tune that inspired us to invite them to join us on stage. There was no rehearsal, but since we were in the land that spawned cumbia, we asked them to play some of the traditional music of their city with us as an intro to an original cumbia-inspired song that we were going to perform that night. Here's a small bit of what transpired. performance, a couple of my bandmates realized that even though we played and even composed some cumbia tunes, they did not know for sure where and how this music came about or how it became so popular. In this video, I aim to briefly explain and answer the questions posed by my bandmates then. Let's begin with the meaning of the word cumbia. Many historians, linguists, and musicians have assumed that the word cumbia has its linguistic roots in several words of Bantu origin. These include cumbe, cumbe, cumba, and Kumbi. Kumbe is a Bantu rhythm and dance from Bioko Island in what is now Equatorial Guinea. The word Kumba also means roar or loud noise in some Bantu languages, while Kumbi is a Bantu word for drum. On the other hand, Descendants of the Pokabui people in what is today the Magdalena River Basin around the Mompos Depression argue that the word cumbia has its roots in the Pokabui word kumbage, a very well-known cacique or ruler of the Pokabui people during the Spanish colonial period. Kumbage was a ruler famous for his celebrations which included copious amounts of drinking, music, and dancing. Even with this limited information, one could surmise that the origins of the word cumbia have become a very controversial subject amongst the people in the places from where it evolved. To add to this confusion, the Diccionario de la Real Lengua Española, the official dictionary of the Spanish language, describes the word cumbe as the dance of people from Equatorial Guinea, a dance of black people. Personally, I don't give much credit to definitions of things of indigenous or African origin as they appear in the Spanish language dictionary, as often they are very inaccurate, culturally biased against indigenous or African cultures, and not based on true knowledge of the cultures that they describe.
But if the etymology of the word cumbia is controversial, its musical roots are even more so. Before entering into this discussion, however, it's important to be aware of the geographic origins of cumbia. Cumbia sprang from towns and dwellings along the upper Magdalena River Valley Basin near the Caribbean coast of what is now Colombia. More specifically, in cities and towns bordering the Magdalena River as it makes its way through the now states of Magdalena, Cesar, Sucre, Bolívar, and Atlántico. Cumbia's origins are synonymous with the Spanish colonization of the lands we now call Colombia. Two of the most dominant groups of the area at the time were the Chimila and Pocabuy people. The Pocabuy country included the cities we now know as El Banco, Chiriguana, Mompos, Tamalameque, and Guamal, among many others. All of these major Pocabuy centers were built on the banks of or near the Tucurinca River, what is now called the Magdalena River. The Chimila people were established in most of the Cesar River Basin and the valley around it, between what is now called the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta and the Serrania del Perija mountain ranges bordering along the Magdalena or Tucurinca River. Many of the important Chimila centers of the region, such as Chimichagua and Valledupar, take their names from former caciques or rulers of the region. Chimichagua for one, and Upar being another. Valle de Upar, in Chimila, means the Valley of Upar. The Cesar River and State take their name from an adaptation of the Chimila word Sasari, which means calm water. Palenques and other communities founded by people of African origin who escaped bondage and slavery during the Spanish colonial period were also instrumental to the genesis of Cumbia. Two of the most famous Palenques that exist to this day are Evitar and San Basilio de Palenque. San Basilio de Palenque was founded in 1610 by Bencos Biojo, an African man born in what is now Guinea-Bissau in West Africa who, years after being enslaved, led a revolt in the Colombian coastal city of Cartagena de Indias and liberated not only himself, but scores of other enslaved African people. Evitar and San Basilio de Palenque remained isolated for centuries, thus preserving much of their African cultural heritage. Other Palenques that were founded along the banks of the Magdalena River and its tributaries such as Altos del Rosario, San Bernardo, and Arenal, were instrumental in initiating the cultural miscegenation of indigenous people from the area and descendants of the formerly enslaved African founders of the Palenques. So how did Cumbia begin? There are mentions in letters written as early as 1580 by Lope de Orozco, the Spanish governor of the province of Santa Marta to the Spanish king, in which he describes music and gatherings of indigenous people of the region where they played flutes made out of a cane-like material. Mentions of indigenous people from the Magdalena River Basin playing cane-like flutes can also be found in documents from the 1600s, 1700s, and 1800s. Many of these mentions are found not only in letters written by Spanish overlords, but also in the accounts of foreign travelers. The Colombian composer José Barros, arguably the most famous composer of Colombian cumbias and a native of the city of El Banco in the heart of the Pocabuy territories, would often cite oral traditions learned directly from local Pocabuy indigenous elders. 
Jose Barros often recounted how cumbia was born from the funeral ceremonies that Pocabuy and Chimila people would hold when one of their leaders or caciques died. Jose Barros was adamant regarding the indigenous roots of cumbia. He would often say that cumbia didn't contain a single hint of Africa and that it would be easy to check this information because, to his knowledge in the United States, which received so many thousands of African people during the slave trade, did not have anything resembling cumbia in its folkloric manifestations. He argued that the same could be said for other slaveholding colonies in the Americas and the Caribbean Antillean countries. In contrast to the observations made by Jose Barros, Africanist historians in Colombia often attribute the emergence of cumbia to the first series of contacts between enslaved African people in the port cities of Cartagena de Indias, Cienaga, and Santa Marta, with indigenous people of Pocabuy and Chimila origin during the festivities surrounding the celebrations of the Virgen de la Candelaria. In these celebrations, Drummers of African origin would provide the rhythmic accompaniment and complement to the melodies played by their indigenous counterparts on their clean flutes and gaitas. This situation was analogous to that lived by the inhabitants of the Palenques as they came into contact with the indigenous people of the Magdalena River Basin where they founded their free towns. The main difference being that in these more isolated communities where a common language did not initially exist, music, along with dance and food, became one of the main methods of communication and cultural miscegenation between them. Cumbia was not only the resulting expression of this type of contact. Porro, tambora, and many other musical genres also sprang from this particular set of circumstances. For the purposes of this story, however, we'll stick to cumbia. The original and authentic forms of cumbia were exclusively instrumental. Rhythmic patterns may vary according to the instrumentation utilized and stylistic characteristics appear to delineate the predominance of either indigenous or African roots in each community of performers. In all forms of traditional cumbia, melodic duties are handled by either a set of gaitas, macho and hembra, male and female, or a reed cane instrument called caña de millo. The rhythmic accompaniment is done by a trio of drums, llamador, tambora, and alegre. Another rhythmic accompaniment element in the traditional ensemble are the idiophones, which can be a set of maracas and or aguache. The names of these instruments could vary according to the region where the ensemble performs, but their function within the ensemble is always the same. Gaitas are of indigenous origin. The gaita hembra, the female or lead gaita, has five holes and functions as the main melodic instrument of the ensemble. The gaita macho, or male gaita, functions as melodic accompaniment to the gaita hembra and is much more limited in scope as it only possesses two holes. The gaita macho player often plays the instrument with one hand while accompanying the ensemble with a maraca on the other hand. The caña de millo is an indigenous melodic instrument made from a small piece of millo cane, which is then drilled with several holes and held parallel to the ground in order to produce a sound, much like a modern European style flute. While it is perfectly acceptable to have either the gaitas or the caña de millo as a lead instrument in a cumbia ensemble, they don't ever perform at the same time in the same ensemble. The drums of the cumbia ensemble are of African origin. The llamador, which in Spanish means the one who calls, is the main timekeeper of the drum ensemble. Its accompanying rhythms rarely if ever vary within each ensemble. The llamador is played in two ways. One, for ensembles accompanying a set of gaitas, it is played with one hand with the body of the drum held horizontally. 
and two. For ensembles accompanying the melodies of a caña de millo, it is played between the legs with both hands. In this function, it may also vary its rhythmic accompaniment and on occasion also converse with the melodic elements of the ensemble. The tambora, also called bombo, is a double-headed drum typically played with sticks. Some indigenous sources mention that some pre-colonial era ensembles of the Pukabui people also played a double-headed drum with sticks as accompaniment to the funerary rites of a leader. Its function within the ensemble is multifaceted, with the tambora player in charge of playing accompanying rhythms on the side of the drum while accenting and complementing the melodies of the gaitas or caña de millo with notes on the skin. It is also the lowest sounding instrument of the ensemble. The alegre drum, meaning happy in Spanish, is in charge of marking and complementing the melodies of the gaitas and caña de millo. The alegre can produce a wide variety of sounds and in keeping with African tradition can be made to speak by a skillful performer. The maraca, sometimes called a maracón or big maraca, is an idiophone played by the gaita macho player. In the case where the melodic instrument of the ensemble is the caña de millo, the maraca player will play two maracas. This instrument provides the high frequency content of the ensemble. The guache is the other idiophone of the cumbia ensemble, also providing the high frequency content to the music. Originally, it was made from bamboo or thick cane pieces filled with seeds. Nowadays, it is made from a metallic cylinder also filled with seeds. Traditionally, it was used to accompany the caña de millo ensembles.
for most of its history, cumbia was music made by and for people primarily of non-European ancestry. It was performed in outdoor spaces for all sorts of occasions and celebrations, ranging from births and funeral ceremonies to later celebrations of patron saints, crop cycles, and or carnivals. It was not unusual for cumbia celebrations to go on for days. And for centuries it remained an instrumental form of music. It wasn't until the late 19th century, when the Spanish language had become the dominant language of all what is now called Colombia, that songs began to appear in the repertoire of the cumbia ensembles. La Cumbia Soledeña, founded in 1877 and continuing to perform to this day, pioneered the inclusion of sung verses in cumbia. By the 1940s, along with other costeño or coastal forms of music like porro and vallenato, cumbia began spreading from the Caribbean coast and the Magdalena River basin to other parts of Colombia. At the time, Cuban mambo-style orchestras were the dominant form of popular dance music. Colombian clarinetist and bandleader Lucho Bermúdez, with his mambo orchestra-influenced style of cumbia, helped bring the music into the country's interior. Originally, cumbia was frowned upon by the elite class, but as it spread, the class association subsided and it became popular in every sector of society. The early international spread of cumbia was helped by the proliferation of record companies based in Colombia's Caribbean coast. The three most important companies of the time were Discos Fuentes, founded in 1934, Discos Sonolux, founded in 1949, and soon thereafter Discos Victoria. The most fruitful time for the Colombian music industry, however, came in the 1960s, as Colombian records began to be exported in mass to Mexico City, the musical capital of the Americas for most of the 20th century. From Mexico City, Cumbia quickly spread to all of Latin America, where it has remained one of the most popular and adaptable genres of music, from the Spanish-speaking communities of the southern parts of the United States all the way to Argentina. Each country where cumbia has landed has developed its own style, to the point where it is considered a representative national style of music in most Latin American countries. For this reason, many traditional Colombian cumbia performers say that although cumbia originated in Colombia, it now belongs to the world. There have been many great exponents of cumbia and its derivative sister forms like bullerengue, porro, tambora, chandé, and garabato, among many others. La cumbia soledeña, los gaiteros de San Jacinto, Petrona Martinez, and Totola Mompocina are but some of the greatest exponents of the different expressions of cumbia. I've been very fortunate to know and study with Eduardo Martinez, a great master drummer and gaitero from Cartagena now residing in Los Angeles, who has performed with all of them. He is a true cultural treasure and we are lucky to have him as an instructor in the Arts and Corrections program in the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. May his light continue to inspire others for many years to come.